What up guys? It's finally it. We're gonna go with Galleos Bloodcrest and try to make a mockery out of Live Arena and get some wins with him. I was pretty, you know, depressed about pulling him and Aphidius for a few days, but <laughs> the weekend is over and it's time to move on. And it's time to see that the most that we can make out of him. And on the good side, like the one one thing that kind of now has come up when testing him, which I kind of feel good about and hope that maybe it's a one thing that can specifically good for be good for me personally. And that's going to be the fact that since he does do the decreased defense, which, you know, they will often have immunity, so it's kind of tricky, but maybe in some battles I can buff strip them with Wukong or something like that. Even though, you know, <laughs> I'm going to get locked out a lot, but... Maybe in some battles I can, you know, land the decreased defense and not get polymorphed and so on. And Arima passive is not gonna stop the decreased defense debuff, so he can, I think, one-shot Harimas, but we'll see about that. I don't think he can without defense buff, with the decreased defense, but certainly with the buff we totally can um, one-shot them. And, you know, that's a lot of conditions that we need both defense buff and defense down. But in those situations, I guess we can one-shot, which normally is impossible for me, and people pick Harima against me pretty much like 90% of the battles, and I hate it, I hate her. I wish I had her so people couldn't pick it. You probably know if you have seen my videos before, but maybe we can do well against Harimas today. That's, that's what I'm thinking, that's where I'm at, where my m mindset is, but... We'll see if we can actually put that th thing into practice. Anyway, here we go. He does, you know, he's clearly intended to be a Hydra champion, like Aphidius, sadly. So that's the one. One issue is that even though there's a good chance that those champions might get buffed, but even if they do, what will they get buffed for? I don't think even if they get buffs, they, they will become good champions for PvP like Siegfried. That's kind of, you know, the sad part about it. That I don't think they even have any future potential when they get buffed. <laughs> Just trying to be, you know, realistic. So I'm sorry if I crossed somebody's streams that it's going to be like top tier champion in PvP, like happened with Siegfried. But, you know, there are still mythic champions. We're going to be able to use the second form even if we get locked out. So, you know, it's probably still going to be better than my alternatives, let's say. But we'll, we'll find out. I'll show it after this battle. You're, you're going to have... <laughs> you're going to have laugh at this, but... We're literally running, I think, uh, is it attack ring on the, on the roster? I'll double check after this. Actually, I can just look it up from the optimizer. I, I made a video about um, Galleos. If you didn't see it, go watch that one. Ah, give me a sec. I'm sure that's that's a Nuke. Nuke Wukong, but he has the accuracy buffs from... Mikage, so it's probably gonna polymorph my UDK, but we're still gonna go with it, of course. What else do we want to pick here? I'm feeling like surely we're gonna go with Rotos now, since we already picked the UDK anyway. Yeah, this time I don't think we're gonna use the <laughs> Galleos in the battle, unless we're gonna try to use him as Bus Tripper or Decrease Defense or something like that. Oh, a Bomb Champion. Interesting. That is kind of bad. Fuck. I, I always get totally screwed from bomb champions, and I think my Necrot is missing a piece of gear and I forgot to fix it. Ah. Uh, we're so gonna lose that one. I don't have a good answer to this, and my. I don't think it's gonna work. I, ha I have her in stone skin as well. Anyway, this is what we got. <laughs> it's an attack ring. That's the best that we got. At least it, it has double defense roll on the attack ring. 
but we are literally gonna use that on Kalleus just to get the set going on and 5 star amulet. Just so we can get 4 piece stone skin. Uh, I think maybe maybe more. To it's not Gnishak. Uh, well, w the passive is gonna. I think we can do it. I think we can do it. I think Mord can can take a hit from a bomb. I think. Oh, now we got the weekend debuff too. Okay, now he's putting more debuffs on us. I don't know if. Okay, it's not gonna work. I think we're just gonna get bombed. Maybe Mord survives it. We're go we're gonna remove some debuffs, but we have so many debuffs on us. That um, is it gonna work? I'm not sure about this at all. Maybe if I get lucky here, I might remove the stone skin and the attack buff. So wait, it's a stone skin, Gaius, six p stone skin Gaius. So how high damage can it have? Okay, surely my even with oh, it lost the attack buff. Surely my mod can take one hit. I'm pretty sure the attack buff is like retroactive, so I don't think it's gonna count now for. Oh, we even lost. He made a mistake, he shouldn't have removed the stone skin on the Arbiter. That's actually good for us. Now my mod is definitely good. I'm not even sure, is the passive gonna proc before the bomb? Or is the passive just gonna remove the bomb before it and then ticks? I guess we'll find out, you know. Mod is... Okay, we... Yeah, it ticked before we took... The, okay. Mod is kind of new thing, so we're kind of testing... <laughs> testing some uncharted waters here. I don't think the Wukong has the AoE nuke yet. Ah, uh, everybody's stunned. Mord is gonna remove it, but not not before Rotos loses the turn, so... Ah! Uh, and I think... Wait, again he made a mistake. He reduced the turn meter of Narses. And Maud went first. And removed the stun. Oh fuck, he still moved before us. <laughs> that was so close. This guy made like multiple like major mistakes, <laughs> but we still lost it. That was kind of close. If he didn't reduce the turn meter of Narsus, Narsus would have gone before Mord and we couldn't have removed the stun, but okay, we, we lost that one. Um I would have used my Necrot, but my I think my Necrot was missing a piece of gear, so Yeah. I was missing a Messing with some stuff before and I forgot to fix it, but I knew it instantly <laughs> when we got to that situation that he doesn't have boots. Uh, which boots do we want? I mean, the, the mod boots are better, but I actually went with those on mod because they just because she needed more speed, honestly. She, she needed, needed to be faster than my Narthus, and she wouldn't be with the other boots, but when I can, I will switch the boots around. But yeah, I don't I don't have a good answer to bombs, honestly, because I'm always gonna go second, and my Duchess and like everybody's in stone skin. All of my revivers are in stone skin. Even Duchess is in four piece. I'm kind of thinking maybe I should, maybe I should stop using my Duchess in stone skin, since I have two other stone skin revivers. Maybe I should just put her in like something else. Can we... Yeah, Mord is in the Immortal set. I don't know if I want to steal that from her right now, but we could... Hmm. Maybe we could put this on Dotsus and have Mord in something else. Oh, and these need to be... Dusted. Come on, let us see. Good luck. No, but okay, it's better than nothing. I think, I think it's time, you know, I just got the mods, so I had not thought about it, but I think it's time to put my Duchess away from Stone Skin, just... <laughs> we have 2 piece Stone Skin, but 2 piece is fine, 2 piece is actually good, we get the extra HP, okay. This is kind of a um, little bit cutting in for the library in a video, but let, let's fix these pieces of gear things fast, I'm gonna think about it more in detail later, but I think... Now that we only need one piece set, since, you know, two piece gives us HP, and it's definitely worth to use the, um, the amulet, but can we... 
Yeah, we, we can get the better. I feel like I had like a guad, guad HP banner, but maybe I didn't. No, I, I, you know, it's... I feel like I had, but okay, maybe not. This is better on paper, but we lose a little bit HP. But I think, we, yeah, we'll go with this. More speed is good too, so... Now we'll have reaction. And now the Duchess is not in stone skin anymore. So it's gonna be better against bombs running her. And he's in that. And now I need to fix mod. Little bit troubleshooting here, but it's, you know... Wait, I don't? No, okay, I don't. Okay, what well, I need to... Okay, never mind. Yeah, I need to fix more eventually anyway, because I I was talking about the fact that she's in, like, attack, attack amulet and crappy ring and so on. And I needed a couple things that I probably will get eventually, and then she's in much better situation. But I wanted to have two-piece immortal on her to have some sustain, but I guess we can do it right now. And I do have want to have her in 6p stone skin and not 4. Otherwise, maybe I could do something like Swift Parry and stone skin would be kind of interesting. Should I do it? I'm kind of tempted now. She might be a lot faster. I probably should think think about this more some other time, but... We have two accessories, I mean, though they're really crappy ones. Maybe we'll put her in Swift Parry for now, just because I'm not using anybody in Swift Parry and... I'll think about it later, but in my ideal um, mind, I wanted to have her in 2 PC Immortal for some healing, and I, I have it, but I need to have her in a fast and in stone skin also, and I can get all of those right now. But okay, so quick fix. That will do, right, fitting room. Okay, with these, well, I, she's still kind of slow. I thought she would be faster. Nah, yeah, I, I guess they don't have a lot of speed rolls. Do I have? A... Hmm. And now I can boot better amulet too. I I should go with this though. I'm just wondering, maybe maybe I have like one good stone skin piece of gear that yeah these boots that isn't in use. Maybe we can put these boots on on and and have like um some really good sweet parry top pieces. We're we're losing a lot of accuracy though. Maybe I need to think about this later. I don't this doesn't sound good. Okay, we need just quick fix and we'll we'll think about it later. Yeah, may maybe perception is the easiest choice right now. I really didn't want to put her in perception. I wanted the immortal, but this is a temporary thing. Okay, that's good enough. That's actually... It's not super tanky, but I think she's actually... 276. I think it's faster than... Rotos now. Yeah, maybe this is good for now. Just so that Maud is slightly faster than all of my nukers. Anyway. Carrying on. I just made a super long video about champion gearing. So... <laughs> we don't want to make this another champion building guide. But I guess we... You saw a little bit my mindset about it.
Usually I like to take my time when I do builds, maybe way too much time, honestly. But I'm kind of, you know, maybe watching some YouTube videos and gearing champions at the same time w when I do it for myself and I'm not in rush. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm very thorough, even if it's like a tiny advantage I want to take it. And I don't normally gear my champions quickly like that without calculating the optimizer and thinking about that kind of stuff. By the way, speaking of champion gearing, I haven't been shilling for my Discord lately. There's a channel in my Discord called Useful Information. In that channel is a calculator for damage, like all types of damage, and it's the best calculator in the game and hardly anybody knows about it. You totally should join the Discord and check <laughs> check out that um, that calculator and while you're at it, you know, talk about PvP and so on. I really want to grow the Discord and make it like a PvP community hub. Since that's kind of, you know, we don't really have one for raid, so... Do we want to go? I, yeah, I, I think we do. I like picking my Rotos against Trixia, yeah, and I don't want to let him get the UDK, so we have to go with this. I wish Mac-chan didn't lose the passion to the game and didn't quit, because he made a Discord, but he did like make Discord early on. He pretty much made a Discord just before he quit the game, and he didn't really he wasn't active and he didn't really try to promote it or anything like that if he just made the discord like a year earlier or maybe two years i think he could have made an insanely big pvp discord and even if he quit the game i'm sure it would live on but his discord kind of never hit off because of it so i'm not really quite as big as mac chan so it's not as easy to make a good discord but i really want to do it Okay, he's totally gonna ban the UDK since he picked the Seekrund. And n n now we know that we're against Lockout. What do we want to do? I could even go with a triple nuker here. Like, um, go with the Galleos. Should I? No, I, I think we want to get the Reviver. Oh fuck, I was too slow. <laughs> I thought I clicked more, but we got the Galleos. I guess that he's the highest. Uh, power, so you're gonna get it. Like, the thing with uh, Mythics, I think, is that the uh, player power is like counted for both forms, so you can have like insanely ridiculous powers. I think Galleus was like 210,000 or whatever, but I think my Rotos is like 170k, so you probably could have like champion at 400,000 power if you really wanted to do it. But I was thinking about Gallo, so I guess we'll we'll get to do this. I think if he didn't have the secret passive, I would like the Gallo's, but now we have no reviver in the team at all, so that's why I was thinking about going with uh with the uh, mod, but I'm sure Duchess would have been maybe better than these two. Oh nice, at least we survived that. And Rodos got weak hit from Krixia, so we can actually go into town. Which one do I want to get rid of? Mika, I feel like yeah, we we want to go for Mika even even if we risk getting weak hits. Yeah. Don't want to get stuck. Oh, oh, okay, nice, nice, nice. And this is actually kind of good situation for us. I'm not that worried about the. Taras, he doesn't have a lot of buffs in the team because he already lost half of it. Wait, what do I want to... Yeah, yeah, this is fine. Taras is not gonna die. He al already lost, you know, half of the champions. He doesn't have that many buffs. Taras AoE isn't gonna hit hard. The A2 also is not gonna hit for anything because we have UDK. So the only thing we really need to worry about here is Siegfried, who is gonna proc the... Wait, actually, this was like unintended big brain. Oh my god. Well, I think he's gonna die though, but if he doesn't kill, kill my Galleos now... Dude, he weak it. 
Oh, okay, and then Rotos got the extra turn. Okay, never mind. Even if Rotos d died here, Kalleos could, you know, buff strip that block damage. So I think we would have been good, but okay. Now we definitely won. Then we have the UDK, so even if Taras wasn't frostbitten, we would be super good. There we, there we go. I don't think he was expecting this outcome here. By the way, shout out to Frostbite. I think I made two videos about Frostbite. I'm probably going to make another video about it down the line. I think it's one of the best sets in the PvP. No cap. I think it's criminally underrated. People don't even consider it as an item set. Not only do I think Frostbite is a good item set, I think it's top tier item set for PvP. If you disagree, then come at me with comments, but I'm I'm gonna die on this hill, so... But yeah, there we got some Frostbite action. I, I can, you know, self-counter myself a little bit and reveal that my UDK is obviously in 2-piece Frostbite and 6-piece Stone Skin. That means that he's not um, tacked out in reaction. I would generally recommend you to build both reaction and stone skin on UDK because of charge it. But my my will my UDK will get destroyed by charge it if they proc the passive. Since they can ignore stone skin, people usually want to have both reaction and stone skin on UDK, and people kind of often consider George it an UDK counter, so it, it's very often peaked against me. Well, for other reasons too, but but for that as well. But yeah, so far so good, we're getting some Gal Galleus action, maybe it's gonna turn out much better than I thought. I, I think, you know, not to, you know, do like a humble brag, I hate when people do it, but I feel like, um, uh, this seems like a mod battle. I can't wait to get one star blessing on mod, it's gonna be so, so much fun having her in Polymorph. I think we're gonna go with Galleus, of course, here. Like I was saying, Galleus can do damage through the Harima passive, and we also have Polymorph for him. I don't think Necrot is gonna be that useful against the Marius. Mm. Yeah, let's go to, let's go with Mord for now, and then we'll see what we pick last. But what I was gonna say, the hum humble bragging part, and again, don't, don't get offended, I literally mean this, but I think that, um, like, I have very good gear, I have very bad champions. I know, I cry about it all the time. But I think I maybe forgot, you know, <laughs> like, even if I get a little bit upgrade, how much difference the champion makes, and even if, you know, like, the rooster is considered, like, one of the worst possible mythic champions, it's still a big upgrade from my, <laughs> from my other ones, so maybe it's not gonna turn out that, that bad after all. I'm probably gonna get a lot of use out of Rooster, now that I think about it. My biggest deal is that I need more champions with defense buffs, and only Reviver in the game really that does it well is Sifi. We have two good, not good, but two new ones. Um, more does defense buff, and then there is the... What faction is it? There, there's the mini Dutchess that I think is the Sylvan uh, faction, he does do it as well. I actually do have him. Maybe I need to think about gearing him as well. Maybe we'll go with Wukong as the last champion in the team. Instead of fuck. Fuck me. <laughs> I was gonna go for Necret the last second, but I was too slow. Probably, you know, I probably should have just stick to the Wukong and not even gone with them. Necrot, because Marius can reduce the duration of the boss and it can remove it. Even though Necrot would be very good against the Arima here in this matchup, I really would like to use it. But Rotos does have Polymorph too, so maybe this isn't the worst. I have now 
two chances to proc Polymor, so maybe it was better to go with either Wukong or even Rotos instead of Necrot. I wonder if I could just build my Necrot with some accuracy. I probably could do that these days. I, I should do it, honestly. I should build him with accuracy and put Polymorph on him since I, I have done with that with other stuff too. Not like I would lose that much on it. Yeah, I'll do that later. It, it sounds like a good idea. You can never have enough Polymorph and not having 6 star champion sucks, but I guess you just need to build some accuracy and, and tough it out. We lost the stone skin, which is very unfortunate. Yeah, and we got one shot. After that, uh, can we get a turn on mod? Wait. How did Mord get... Okay, we, we lost it. Yeah, how did Mord get slept? That's we, we, I mean, we got kind of unlucky, but it's, you know... Marius has a very good chance to remove the stone skin, so it, it sucks. I mean, we had, like, um... Multiple champions in stone skin there, and everybody lost it, so... Sucks to suck. C can't wait to get... Marius, I think it's gonna be, like, one or two more weeks for me. I, I have one more Iron Twins grinding mission left and then I'm done. By the way, I don't think we got first pick in any of these battles, so... Finally we got Armands. Getting the first pick and not having Armands on enemy team is a big deal. But yeah, those guys who pulled the rooster, it's not... Maybe you can make use out of it, it's not that bad, it, it could be worse. I feel like countering Arima is kind of a potential niche utility for him. And of course he's a mythic champion, so he's not locked out as bad as others are. As long as you can get him in stone skin at least and have a little bit tankiness. Like here, maybe we could ban the Sifi and go with Galleos. That's an option almost. But, mm, but we'll see, we'll see. Maybe, I'm, I don't think I'm gonna do it though. Yeah, I think we're gonna pick Rodos on this one. I, I was considering banning Sifi and going with Kalleos, but we don't know his last pick and if he picks something like George it would mess it up and with the setup he's having, I think picking George or Lazarus as the last champion is okay, is very likely. Okay, that wasn't the case though. He he might have picked Harima because I picked the Rodos though. We're still gonna ban the Yumeka since I committed this. Just just in case he didn't ban Armands, but okay, he did do it. If he didn't ban my Armands, ban something else, and I banned the Sifi, that would have I would have, would have felt so dumb about it. But I this is the more likely scenario. I I should have just Um not banned the Yumeka and went with with the rooster, maybe. Then, then he wouldn't have had the immunity buff and no reviver, and maybe, yeah, maybe that would have been a big. Damn, that that would have been a big play. I, I made a mistake here, honestly. I don't think we have enough damage to kill the Arima, but let's give it a go. Oh, okay, we did. Okay, nice. I think we're good then. I don't think, yeah, I don't think we can lose. <laughs> lose at that point after that. What's the record? Okay, those were before it. I did a couple of battles before. Before this, when I was bored. 2-2 two, two so far. I'll take it. And I had a couple accidental <laughs> wrong champion picks, so. I 
Honestly, I think that fight probably would have gone even better if I picked, picked the rooster and didn't ban the Yumeko. So I need to get rid of the old mindset that I don't have any champions that can nuke through lockout. And I need to look for those opportunities where he might actually do the job. Okay, I think we're gonna pick him all the time because obviously we are meeting a lot of Harima. He's also going with the Mikage, so there's a good chance that the last two picks are like Wukong and Sifi. That, that would make a lot of sense. That's a very common team comp that I see a lot. Okay, we're, yeah, we're definitely already gonna pick the Rooster, and I think I want to save a potential of Necret as the last pick. But who else do I want to pick now? I think probably Duchess this time in, instead of Mord. Yeah, because Duchess does have the Polymorph. Plus, if we have like Duchess and Necret, we're gonna have massive, massive fat shields and I can definitely take a couple hits from Harima, assuming that he doesn't pick champions like George or Lazarus that would ignore the shields. But okay, come on. Pick something easy that I can <laughs> I can win against. You can do it. Oh okay, we UDK was what I was expecting. Wasn't really, um... How did I forget his name? Her name? Uh, wh whatever she is. What wasn't expecting her. M massive blackout. I think we have to go with the UDK here, in instead of Necrot. What? <laughs> Why can't I remember her name? Like, Emic Drunkhard is coming to my head, but obviously she's not Emic. I mean, I know her kit well. I mean, she does the whales and heals and so on, but what's the name? It's not like I don't see him her ever. Usually I meet her maybe like um, every other session. We can't even see the names in the battle. So we could do defense buff in the first form, but I don't think we want to do that. I think we just instantly go on the second. Actually, should I do it? Let's do it. Let's see how this goes. No, this is the one that does it, right? Yeah. Let's... Oh no, that's the wrong skill. Fuck. <laughs> that's the wrong skill. I haven't been using the first form a lot. I should have done the defense buff. And then on next turn, after the stone skin on Harima ends, then we're gonna switch the form and do the decrease defense. I, I made a mistake here. With these shields and my UDK, I could have lived even doing the defense buff and, and then done damage next turn. I think we're just going to switch switch the form next turn without doing the defense buff. Okay, we, we have the block buff step off anyway, so we can forget about it. And we have to open with the A3 actually. That, um, they need to fix the skill. If this, these abilities were the other way around, it would be way better, but it deals damage and then it buff strips them. But if it did the other way around, it would be so much better. And her A2, he, his A2, does it the opposite way, that it does damage and places decrease defense, but it first does the decrease defense, just, just so that you can make the most out of it.
by the way, if, if I'm a little bit extra hyped today, it's because I'm I'm on my second Mega Force. It is what it is. I I had a very busy day and I did a lot of work, so. I was planning to go running and do the gym after this video too and I I made like three videos because I'm gonna be away for the weekend. I mentioned it before in I don't remember which video, but I think one of the live arena videos that I, we're gonna have the crawfish party on weekend and I'm gonna go to my parents' house and that's like on the other side of the country, so Yeah, he, he had the immunity, we couldn't place the decreased defense, but they were very low, so I almost thought maybe I can kill them with the nuke, but I didn't have defense buff, they didn't have decreased defense, so I'm not surprised that I didn't kill them. And we're running, <laughs> we're running 5 star amulet and anti queen on Galleos, so don't forget about those things. He could hit way harder than mine does. No 4 star blessing, attack amulet, uh, attack ring and 5 star amulet, so. If I can do this much, this much damage, probably you can do the same and maybe even more. Considering honestly that we don't have defense buff at all in this battle, or so far at least, he hasn't been hitting that bad. It's it's fine. It's not that bad. If we had like a Sifi, the damage would be a lot more relevant. Okay, finally we got some turns on, on um, Marosus and it's basically game over. We could kill Elva, but let's just kill the Wukong. Maybe Galleos is gonna be my new Helicat replacement. I already kind of took a couple Helicat item pieces on him, to be honest. And both of them, I guess, do the... Damn, do I want to switch form though? Let's do it. Both of them do the unkillable, so... Yeah, let's do this and let my... Oh wait, it's only on him. I thought it was for the team. Okay, I'm being dumb here. I shouldn't have switched the form then, I guess. I wanted to get to this form so I could get defense buff up before I go back to the other form, but okay, that, that wasn't maybe the best choice, but I guess he also can't kill a rooster now, and he also won't be able to kill it the next turn because we're gonna get the defense buff, so maybe it's not that bad. I think the defense buff is only two turns. I hope it's three turns. Let me double check. It might be three turns because he's a mythic champion and he's gonna switch form, so two turns defense buff would kind of suck. Yeah, it's only two turns, but I guess Jatsis is also gonna get de increased defense, so it's gonna help her. To <laughs> To save, stay up. I, I thought that the other skill also applied to the allies, but I, this I should have done this one first, I guess. Oh, we instantly lost it. Okay. I guess we're just kind of missing here. <laughs> I, I, I feel like if I just stayed on the other rooster form, I probably would have won the battle. But now we're kind of looking bad and. We're not really able to hit the Harima at all. And the uh, Elva is so no yeah Elva Elva was the name. Elva is so fast that we're not able to get the 
decrease defense up since he's always rotating the immunity buff. Okay, we lost it. We lost it. I feel like we could have won it, but I made some mistakes there. Happens. Happens. I, I don't know why I'm even overthinking about it. I'm always gonna first pick the white duo. There's no reason to try to be smart and pick Duchess first to get Polymorph or anything like that. Okay, Marius. And a speed team, interesting. It's a speed team with Marius, which is very powerful because uh, Marius does the buff strip without <laughs> going through stone skin and without being able to get polymorph from that. So it's really good if he if he's the fastest nuker in a speed team, and then the other nuker maybe charge it or whoever can decimate me. Dude, I might almost go with triple <laughs> triple reviver against this team. I hope he doesn't have Harima, but I think we're we're gonna go with these. I don't think we're gonna go with Galleos. Wait, maybe I should go with Galleos. Fuck that. Let's pick double reviver. Let's first see what he does. This is a very very weird down team, but we went with the Duchess for the polymorph. And for mod for the cleanse on the passive, I was gonna just pick one of them and a nuker and go with um, Rotos. But he doesn't have immunity buff on the team. If we can just get a turn on Rooster, and he's in stone skin, but Marius might be able to buff strip it. Okay, he went with the uh, immunity buff. Okay. Because I was gonna say that we could just nuke him with decreased defense but okay maybe i shouldn't have done this because now he picked the rotos but i think we're kind of locked in for the rooster pick now at least he's force affinity but okay maybe i should have picked either duchess or mord and then a necret or, or rotos and necret as the last one or yeah yeah i should have just picked one reviver and rotos and then, then whatever was like needed, depending what he picks. Sometimes when I'm trying to try out new stuff and be smart, it's, you know, <laughs> I'm not doing myself any favors, but maybe I can learn from this <laughs> experience. Actually, I did pick Triple Reviver a couple of times, I think maybe one or two times before in the last week so with the mod being an addition to my reviver roster maybe it's something that i do sometimes it's not completely out of the realm of possibilities okay can we remove the defense boss we could and now they now they don't have immunity so now actually how how hard can we hit Again, we don't have we don't have um, defense buff, but we do have decreased defense on them. So I think I can one shot this arbiter even without defense buff. Obviously, Rotos is gonna survive with passive, and Galatir has the immunity. But that's not too bad. I mean, we did some damage, and we even got the decreased defense on. Ah, oh, fuck! He got double turn. Never mind. 
Oh, 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 oh. That's not that tanky guy out there. And he has many buffs. And Marius uh, nurses a 3 scale from it. I think I can kill it. No, so close. So close. Okay. Maybe that was a mistake. I Maybe I should have just done the AoE. Wait, Mario. Not Marius. Um, what's the name? Rooster. <laughs> Rooster was about to do AoE nook, but okay, we, we got um, outsped and rotated. Like the Galater took like a double turn, so we're screwed. I think. Maybe, I don't know if I can make a comeback with more revive anymore. Nice, we, at least we removed the lockout from the rooster, and he's faster than his... Fuck, ugh. Another stun. I was gonna say that we're faster than his Marius, so we would have actually gotten a turn, but we got stunned again, so... More passive was super good, but not good enough. Are we done? I feel like we lost here. Oh, we removed the enfeeble, but I don't think that's good enough. Almost close, you know. Definitely more than um, rooster are interesting additions to my roster. Yeah, I think even if we can kill everybody else now, I think Rodos is gonna finish us. I think we lost. Oh, we didn't even have damage to to kill the Galater. I think Galater is like the tankiest champion in the game, to be fair. And his is clearly built for speed in, instead of tankiness. But I think he, it has like the best base stats out of any revivers. Yeah, okay, we lost it. Happens, it, it was a good thought experiment. We were trying some new stuff. I think um, I should have went with Mord and Necret at the end, or more than Rotos, and then it would have been good. But I'll do better next time. Anyway, <laughs> let's get a massive win streak at the end. I feel like we're not like winning every battle, but we're doing well, and it's kind of giving me high hopes that we can do much better in future and maybe get the massive win streak suddenly. But both Mord and Rooster... <laughs> I keep thinking M Marius, but it's Galleus. Yeah, Galleus and Marius. My head can't differentiate between those two. But I think with Marius and... With Galleus and Mord, I think we have much greater potential to get more wins. Even if it's not happening right now, but... Let's see in a couple of videos if we're making progress again. Hmm, I, yeah, I think we, yeah, we're probably gonna go with the early mod this time. I definitely want to get the mod. But how do I ensure that I have some polymorph in the team? Because if I go with mod, Angora, Narses, I'm not gonna have like any polymorph at all. And he's also gonna ban my Armands. When I get the 6 star blessing and 1 star, 6 star blessing on Narses, so we can get the polymorph, and just 1 star. Blessing on Mord because she has accuracy. That's gonna make so big difference. Interesting. He went, went with Helicat, so we already have Bush Strip from Mord, and he's still gonna get the defense buff after we he loses the block damage, but we already have this, so it's not that bad. 
what do I want to do here? I could go with Drotos. It ignores the block damage and defense buff and we could get some polymorphs. Or I could go with Rooster and it also does buff strip. But I, I think I think we go with Rotos. Yeah. Rooster could also weak hit on a lot of his champions, so maybe this is what we'll do. QDK? Should I be QDK? I feel like I could. But it might be a support. Wukong. If it's a support Wukong, I probably should have gone with uh Ankara, but if it's not, then I think it was. Okay, it's not. It's an Ukar. Then I think this was the right choice. Yeah, we, we don't have Ankara in this battle. Oh, fuck. We don't have Ankara, but we also don't have a lockout against us, or we banned the Warlord, so we don't need it as, as badly as I often do when they have multiple lockouts in the team, I think we're good. What? I feel like I'm... I'm being handed down the Marios on a platter. Maybe I can't one-shot it. It kind of looks beefy and it has a defense buff. And we don't have enough buffs to get the maximum damage for the A3. But I think I may be... Okay. Oh, okay. We did it. Yeah. We, we got the block revive instantly. That was kind of, you know, almost too good start for the battle. As far as mod goes, I think we need to wait one turn. Yeah. I want the... Helicat to do the block damage before I waste the mod A2. So, although, do I need to? I feel like if I don't use the revive now, I might be in trouble. But the A2 is also gonna heal us, so I think, yeah, let's go with the A2. I don't know if Maud is gonna live to see another turn, though. This, this is why, why I want to her her to ultimately be in Dupi's Immortal. Okay, we died. It's gonna add some tankiness and a revive for us. That was pretty tough team, honestly, with the Marius chanting us. It's okay, we we move on. That's I, I have gotten a lot of losses before, so I'm not really really that bummed up out about it. The funny thing is that I'm like a hyper hyper competitive person. You might maybe not uh, like um you you might be surprised because I don't get that mad from the losses in live arena. But I'm like extremely hyper competitive person. It used to be kind of like a problem when I was young because you know I don't want to say like I had like bad childhood or anything like that. A little bit bad. Let's say like I used to do competitive dancing and what I mean like competitive is that like 50 hours a week and every week I go to training camp. Every weekend I go to either competition or training camps and hardly did anything else when I was a kid. And up to, up to like uh, up to adulthood, and in like high school, you know, for like teenage children, maybe boys doing like dancing is not the most uh, you know most the popular thing. So I used to get bullied a lot because of dancing, like by like a good amount. Not not like you know not American style that people were beating me up every day. Maybe I was in like couple battles, but. Mostly people were just mean to me because I was like a like a naive childish little boy that <laughs> that did dancing, and I was kind of meek in school, but also in dancing, you know, I was kind of uh, I don't know, maybe there's a good word for it, but I was kind of you know, uh, you know when um, 
what's it called? Like, you know when people are like, like manic depressive, that sometimes they are super like on a high and then they are, are on low. I kind of had that thing with my self-esteem, that I had super low self-esteem in relation to school because I was bullied there. But in dancing, I was like kind of good and hyper competitive. And I had like a massive ego and like I was super competitive in dancing and I had like very high confidence in there. So I, <laughs> I, I used to get maybe too mad sometimes when I lost there and I took it way more seriously. But and that's kind of, you know, how I feel about other games sometimes. But I think in the raid PvP, you know, the champion difference is what it is. So. I don't get quite as mad as I get from other stuff. That that was a super long, <laughs> that was a super long explanation and talking about random real life stuff. But yeah. I think we'll go with the dots. Let me let me know in comments if there's a word for it or if you understand what I mean that I had like both super low self-esteem and insanely high self-esteem. And in the like the... Like um, dancing is like... It sounds like it's a... You know, family friendly sport. It's very cutthroat and hyper... Um, competitive. Basically all of the children that grew up doing competitive dancing, they generally turn out to be jerks and <laughs> and they have a pretty like, you know, screwed up personality or at least they do during their teenage years. So I, I kind of had that too. I I totally admit it. Mm, yeah, I think yeah, UDK Rotos. Yeah. My usual, usual favorite team. I, I had this, um, should I even talk about them? Maybe I can, it, this is long time ago. Like, this is when I was like a teenager, teenager or maybe like uh, 17 or something like that. It's super long time ago, maybe I can talk about it. But for instance, one, one thing that I regret is that I had like a dance partner who liked me and obviously you know we were kids so it's not super serious but what i mean like she was like into me in romantic way and i was super a jerk about it to her i i really um i really regret that later i i hope that didn't <laughs> that didn't um screw her up growing up because i kind of had some other people that were jerks to me and I don't know why I was jerk to her, but because I knew that she liked me, but I, I was, so. And and the main reason why I was mean to her, maybe like thinking about this retroactively, like, first of all, I thought that I was better than her and I wanted to have a better partner. And that's probably, you know, the main reason. But probably the secondary reason is that she was probably very similar to me in the sense that she was like a very naive and good kid <laughs> and maybe I have just I had just gotten over that phase and I was starting to be more like um angsty cynical teenager and maybe maybe that maybe that part also kind of um, rubbed me the wrong way. Anyway, let's focus on the battles. If anybody has been through like uh, high level competitive sports when they were young, they probably can relate to this. So let me know if you have. I used to go to like uh, a very competitive, well, well, the best sports college in Finland. And uh, <laughs> I talked about it with people from other sports. And I think it was pretty much the same thing for like almost every sport that it's super competitive and there's like lots of like you know drama between people i think some sports maybe had much better team spirits than other sports like in my experience like so in my school because you know 
most people there were like athletes. People used to mostly hang out with people from your own sport. That that's the basic way that it went. And different sports have like different places where they hang hang out in the school and so on, and their own like friend groups. But I used to be friends with some swimmers, and I had a classmate who was like like a really good swimmer. Like he holded some national records. I think he had the um, butterfly swimming record for 400 meters. I don't remember what age group, but maybe it was like under 18, 400 meter butterfly swimming finish record, so something like that. I used to be friends with that guy and some other swimmers, and I felt like the... I don't know if I should risk weak eating on Mikage. I felt like the swimmers had like much better team spirit than the other other groups. I also knew some people like, of course I knew the dancers, and then I also knew some people from, I don't know what you call it in English. In Finnish it's Muodostelma Luistelo. Let me google it. Oh, synchronized skating. So. I knew people from syn synchronized skating and I knew that <laughs> they had it just like in dancing that people were constantly, you know, biggering and having dramas between like who's better than who or, you know, who they don't like and so on. So I think a lot of sports, <laughs> competitive sports have kind of, you know, some bad... Um, I don't know what's the word, like bad consequences or some b bad effects for, for the like um, behavior and mentality of growing children. But for some reason, swimmers at least, <laughs> at least where I went, used to have much better like relations with each other. That's super anecdotal, but this is a topic that was talked a lot in the school. And I think it was like a general consensus that for some reason the swimmers just had much better team spirit than the rest. I, I don't know why, because they are like it's an individual sport, so you you would think that maybe team sports would would get along better, but it wasn't that way. I guess you kind of get possibly like either jealous or mad at your teammates if you feel like you're better than them. I think we're done. We we can't kill the Narcissus. It would take multiple A1s to kill it, so I think we lost. Very close battle though, but we, we lost it. I, I don't think I should have picked the God levels there though. I think we, yeah, I think we're gonna go with the rooster again, but yeah, let's just go with these two. Also, like by the way, one addition for people that like might not be able to relate that didn't do the sports, but generally, of course, some sports are more expensive than others. But generally, if you do sports at like very high level, it's super expensive, almost regardless of sport. Your parents parents need to be able to spend a lot of money, and generally. A very large um, amount of like the young um, athletes, their parents are wealthy. Th that's just the way it goes. And um, 
especially in dancing. You know, mo most people that do dancing at high level as teenagers, they have a very rich parents. Not me, but most others. And that also adds to the <laughs> adds to the fact that people have very very bad personalities. I think we'll try to I wanna go with Nekrat, but should I still go with the UDK? He's just gonna polymorph my nukers. Now let's try UDK one battle. But think about the combination that you're like a young teenage teenager, you have rich parents. Uh, you do well in competitions, and you know, like you're, like you fly everywhere for competitions, and you feel like, a, um, like a big boy or girl. Those children often are like not the best children. And I used to be like a very, very good boy, and very like naive boy, and then I kind of grew up to be. A lot more cynical. <laughs> cynical in my teenage years because of my environment. But I I grew out of it pretty fast, so Okay. <laughs> this this is why you don't you don't let the enemy have Marius in the team. I mean, Armans in the team. Even without defense buff, like, surely we can kill him. I guess he's banking in on the fact that he can polymorph my Galleus, which, which is why I was considering picking UDK instead of Necrot. Oh, he didn't even try to do it. Interesting. But we we can also do some nice things here. Uh, I think I want to switch the form. I'm almost considering doing the defense buff, but now let's switch the form. We can definitely definitely one shot the Harima, I think. M maybe the Mikake too. We don't have defense buff though, so probably not. Mikake does have good health and defense buff herself. Yeah, okay, not, not even close. But I think uh, I think we're winning. But surely we're winning. We <laughs> we have Armans in the team. What am I saying? What did I? Oh yeah, I forgot the passive. Did I proc the passive? Yeah, resist the cooldown of skills if you kill an enemy while um, they're under decreased defense. I totally forgot about that part. That's actually very good. Now we can do the nuke again. Yeah, if we just had def defense buff and <laughs> we did enough damage to actually kill the enemy sometimes, that passive might be useful. L let's look at the one champion after this battle that is a reviver with defense buff. Okay, nice. That's pretty good. We actually actually got that team pretty pretty well with Kalleus. And I would struggle against this team with Rotos. I probably would have lost this battle with Trotos, so honestly that's kind of good. So th there's the one champion. Where is it? Yeah, I did pull him just recently. Glycade the Meltwater. I don't know what's going on with the naming scheme of Raid lately, but we're getting stuff like Galleus and Marius and Glycade and whatever. They are giving us really hard names, like can we go back to like Rotos and Mountain King? But why are we having super super complicated names these days? Give me a break. Yeah, so he has the revive, but it's 4 turn, four turn cooldown, 40% HP and 25% turn meter. That's kind of bad. And also places increased defense and accuracy. Even if you don't revive them. And he can use this um, skill even if um, even if you don't revive anybody. So you could use it as a defense buff on 4 turn cooldown. I don't know, maybe I should gear him to 
maybe I should have four gear revivers because then I would have somebody to to do defense buff or Galleus or whoever. I kind of need the defense buff. I'm not not gonna lie. But I don't think the rest of his kit is is that useful, sadly. I wish he had to revive and defense buff so maybe two different skills so that we could do the defense buff and also revive. I don't think we really have team slot for <laughs> for Mitrola pick that often, honestly. Mitrola would be my one consistent defense buff. Then again, like Mitra does do hex, which can be super frustrating. And we do have the pseudo buff strip on Galleos. But we kind of want to have the defense buff at the start of the battle, but maybe maybe I should try them. Yeah, we'll see how this plays out. Okay, Armands. Let's see what else. <laughs> what else you bring to the table? By the way, if you have some video ideas that you want to see this week, then let me know in the comments because, like I said, I'm gonna be the weekend away. I'll try to make at least make like some videos beforehand to at least have maybe one or two videos on weekend but i'm not <laughs> i'm not gonna be online then to do any of them so if there's a really good topical video i should do i could maybe do it before friday to to have it up actually i had to leave the home on thursday i think haven't booked my train yet are we gonna go with Galleos against Eharim again? He's using a speed team and we have him in stone skin, so it almost seems like it would be a good idea. Let's go with Galleos. What else I want to pick? Maybe I could have actually gone with Mikake. Mikake kind of sounds interesting to you. Mikake could do the boss trip before Galleo's turn, and then we could get the defense buff. Maybe that's a new combination that I should have thought about. Yeah, I, I should have picked Mikage instead of Wukong here. But I should probably try to run Galleo's with either Mikage or Wukong often. He didn't pick any Lokka, so we can do buff strip on Wukong too. Okay, th this is great. And he, he went with Mitrola. What's going on? This is so weird. Um, I could pick UDK even here. I think he's gonna ban my Angora, but I think we can do this. I feel like we can to totally do this. Okay, he banned UDK. Fair enough. He does get the defense buff. So it's not like he doesn't have some tankiness. Hmm. Okay, it's a Mikake with protection set. But this is why you build Sifi in protection set and nobody else. It's not that good unless you actually do immunity buff and you can get the like um that thing is what you want to protect. No other stuff is not as big deal. 
now we can still land debuffs on them. Okay, yeah, and we're we're instantly gonna switch farm. Rotas is gonna get the extra turn though, so that might be so. Ah, <laughs> Arbiter didn't die. If we just had defense buff, it would be so much better. But Rotas didn't proc passive, so maybe that was a blessing under guys. There's no way we can not win here. Oh what? Oh yeah, we lost he health from the Rotos A2. <laughs> I was I was thinking that we're easily gonna one-shot everybody with, with that nook. Now we might be in trouble. Okay. Didn't tweak it on the polymorph, so they're good. He doesn't have any decreased defense now though, so we're not gonna get the cooldowns back from passive, even if we get kills. And I don't know if we can even kill anybody, yeah. Not with decreased defense on, on us. Okay, surely we can kill the Rotos this time. <laughs> I hope. Right? Okay, very good. That was kind of close, honestly. I I was hoping to do better than that in that battle. <laughs> I was gonna look lo credit for um, what's happening in raid but I ended up randomly looking at some other like very clickbaity um, thread but okay I, I looked at on my own spare time let's look at the raid thread Is Freya worth around 20 sacred? I don't think so, not for PvP at least, but um, other people might be thinking her for other things, let's see. Okay, people are kind of... Uh, Thinking she's worth doing, I really haven't really even thought about it. Like, I have thought about her skills, but not about the events and so on. Oh, we're, we're against somebody from IPR, though I don't know who this guy is. By the way, what do we need? More accessory storage. When do we need it? Yesterday. Barium has actually been asked about this obviously many times, but they have also replied to it many times. And in case you don't know or forget, also they have um, increased the champion, champion and item inventory space many times. But they have always said when asked about it, that it's actually a big technical issue and if they increase the slots on like every account in the game it's actually a big deal and causes issues to them and they can just increase it a lot that's what they said somebody might say that um they're just um lying and maybe i'm i'm not sure i'm not expert on that but that's what they have said Maybe we, yeah, maybe this time we go with the Mikage, Mikage strat and maybe we do them and not ban the lockout. I think Wukong is good if we 
do, uh, um, if we end up banning the lockout though. Let's go with this. I want to see what happens. Now, now we're doing the thing that I should have done last time. Pretty sure he's going to ban my Armands regardless, because he's going to expect that I ban the lockout. And we don't ban it, we ban somebody else. And I think we have pretty good team against him. I think we go for the Gizmark ban. Okay. I think we just made a, <laughs> made a big brain play and he's not gonna... He didn't expect this and I think we can win. But let's first see. He has a very scary, tough team. But I think with this setup we can actually do this battle. Surely. Right? Okay, so... Yeah, we bust trip on Mikage. How, how much Polymorph does he have? Two champions in it. Yeah, so we switch the form on Mikage. We get rid of the immunity buff. And... Galleos is in, in the stone skin. And with that, we can get the decreased defense and hit very hard. Now, we don't have defense buff. If I just had a Sifi in my team and I had the defense buff, I think this would be a very good strategy. We would hit so hard here. But I really can't, can't afford to not have any revivers in my team and get the uh, Mitrola, so... That's kind of good, though. I, I don't think I could have done something like this before. So, I think we also reset the cooldown of that skill again because uh, we didn't. Um, uh, we got kills on the decreased defense. Yeah, <laughs> we can just do it over and over again. Imagine if we had the defense buff and we actually did good damage. I do think Galleos does have some potential. I was kind of all doom and gloom about it, that he couldn't become relevant even if he gets buffed. Because I think I think there's a very very high probability that he gets buffed, because Plarium has, I think both on written and by actions, shown and said that they don't want mythic champions to suck and they don't want to have really good mythic champions. They already have, have buffed many and done some kind of major buffs and reworks, like Siegfried. I think Rooster is very highly likely to get buffed. And maybe if he gets buffed, maybe maybe that would make him good enough for, a, for a, it actually to be relevant in PvP. Who knows? Probably not, but I think situationally that passive can actually be super good in the right circumstances. I think I'll probably end up actually... I need to have both Marius and Galleos geared. Issue is that they both want to have the same items. I want them both in both stone skin and defense scaling nooksat. By the way, by the way, it's good that we have have Maud here now because um, he's probably gonna pick Angora. I don't think we can pick it. I don't want to pick the Duchess with Bolster set. We're probably gonna end up going with Maud. Oh, he didn't pick Angora. Now it would be an option here too to. Um, let me think about it. If I go with Angora and Galleus, and I could actually ban the Narsus, that could be an option. I could also just go with Duchess and Galleus too. I feel like he's not gonna expect this. Yeah, we need to make most out of the fact that we can actually now use some abilities when we're locked out. So let's play against the lockout and not even 
ban it. And th this is kind of uh, us dealing with three different things because Galleo's decreased defense is gonna deal with the Harimo and we're gonna deal with the Yumeko with the uh, again Galleo's um, Galleo's being mythical and Rotos getting extra turns and having low cooldowns and then we also have Duchess there for Polymorph and so on fuck I wanna ban the Eva though now it's an issue damn I thought I was smart but the Eva is a problem here Eva can one-shot Galleus, but he could weak hit on Galleus. Oh, wait, no, no, it's, a, it's the other way around. I'm being silly. Damn. Okay, I, 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 I screwed it up. I should have picked Mord instead of Duchess. I didn't expect that he would... He would get the Eva pick here. But now we have a bolster set and... The Narcissus is gonna, is gonna one-shot us. M maybe if he doesn't proc Helm Smasher. In that instance, my Duchess might survive it just because she's insanely tanky, but she's not gonna survive for multiple turns. Yeah, if I picked Angora or Mod, it would have been better. Apart from that, we were doing good. Maybe he doesn't use the nuke yet. I think he might save it for one turn. Does, it, does he use it? No, I, I think he's gonna use it. I, I would use it if I was him. Damn. Okay, we, we totally lost. Yeah. There's no way to survive against that one. If he didn't get the Helm Smasher on the second hit, then Duchess probably could have survived it, but now, now it's over. Nah, he haven't got the defense buff from Sifi back already because of goddamn Yumeko. Sucks to suck. Okay, what now? I do like to pick my Rotos against Maritzka teams. I don't think Galleus would work that well against her and I'm not sure if I would have the damage, so I think we'll go with Rotos and UDK. Also, I do have another option now with Maud that if they have Narcissus and I don't want to get Bolster. More dodge to attack buff on her A1 and is in stone skin set, so I could still get attack buff on my Rotos sometimes. He picked UDK even though I have. Uh, he picked Wukong even though I have UDK. It must be built with some accuracy at least. I feel like going with Maud just to, just for the boss trip, honestly. I probably would have gone with the Wukong if he didn't pick it, but we could use Maud as a boss tripper too.
Okay, let's see how many of them are in resistance. How many, how many buffs can we cleanse? Everybody, that's kind of good. I think it was everybody, but he, yeah, he, he had some, you know, pr protected buffs. But I think we, no, not on Wukong, Wukong didn't get it. On the other ones, we did reduce the duration. Also, he doesn't have defense buff for... Harima, that's kind of weird. It's not gonna do that much damage. Like, I have UDK against the Wukong, and he also doesn't have defense buff. That seems kind of um, not good for him, honestly. But it's looking kind of bad for me too, so... <laughs> Damn. Harima did that much damage even without defense buff. Holy moly. And we don't have Narsus in the team, so Ankara passive isn't as good as it could be. Oh, he doesn't have any life harvest. I totally... Oh, okay, never mind. Still enough to one-shot even, even without defense buff. Come on. Yeah. I really wish I had Harmo. Okay, I kind of thought we could... Could take that one, but I guess not. Starting to lose my, my voice because... I already did like three videos today. I know I didn't <laughs> I didn't upload them, but I did do them. I did like one one video which was the um rooster video which is uploaded at this point at the time that I'm making this, like just before just before this video. But then I also did um one that isn't uploaded and another sponsored one. By the way, big big thanks for everybody for watching my videos. I honestly can't believe it that I can actually kind of do this as a side job and get some money out of it. When I started making videos, literally the reason why I'm, I'm not capping, I said this so many times and I I thought about it many times. If I like the entire plan in making videos was to get the get the free free gems from the content creator program. I never had any intention to actually try to make any money out of videos. It was just because I knew that I had d done some nice things and maybe I could get subs just doing the classic arena pushes and I could get the free gems. That was honestly the only motivation originally to do content. But then it kind of went better than I thought and later on like much better thanks to well, I guess I had some sponsored videos even before Ash, and I actually had maybe my best deal before before joining like Ash's talent management agency. But after that, you know, I have gotten more sponsored videos, and they helped me out with that stuff. And thanks to him and you guys, I can actually get, make some money out of this. So th thanks a lot. But yeah, th <laughs> there's gonna be another sponsored video. Don't mind that one, though I would say that this sponsored video is actually kind of, um, it almost doesn't feel like advertisement. It's the type of video that I might have possibly made it even if it wasn't a sponsored one. I don't think it's relevant for most people watching my content, but it is relevant for, um, it's really, really useful for some people, let's say. But I'm not gonna say what it is. You'll see it when you, when you see it. But yeah, again, thanks a lot for, for watching my videos and giving me the possibility to do this as my hobby slash um, side job. Not not that I'm making like the big bucks, but I am making some money, and it's totally enough to to sustain myself and it's not even like my full-time occupation and it's my hobby and so on 
So it does feel kind of uh, surreal, to be honest. I'm kind of free to play in real life too. I don't really spend money on anything, so... Like... <laughs> I, I do well with, with not, not a lot, let's say. Yeah, I think we go with the mod. Even, even if I'm not like a massive, you know, big full-time content creator. But I am actually, you know, making, let's say, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to make it sound the other way too, that I'm like bragging about it, but I'm certainly making with my small channel, I'm making much more than just my rent money. So just just from raid, I'm not talking about other stuff, but just from YouTube, I'm definitely actually making like more than I need. So that's very cool. And I'm also studying full time at the same time. So I don't really have to worry about much when I can just do what I'm into and sustain myself that way and also do my other stuff. I'm kind of on a, like on a journey to try to improve myself that I'm um, I'm going to the gym, I'm jogging, I'm trying to get better fit, I'm studying, I'm trying to you know be more <laughs> be more um, what's the word? successful no, not successful be more educated that kind of stuff and i'm also having these as my um like my hobby and side job so everything is going pretty good i wouldn't say that i haven't been successful but i haven't <laughs> i haven't been educated let's say I don't know if I want to do the A2. I think we open with the A3. Maybe we can uh, get get a nuke with the A2 now with decreased defense. Wait, does Maritzka ha yeah, has Polymorph? <laughs> That's, I should have hit then either Ankara or Narcissus. That, that was a mistake. I don't know. Well, wait, I do have attack buff. I can actually just kill the Ankara instantly. Yeah, let's do this. And we still have the revive. So even if Narcissus gets a turn here, I'm, I'm gonna. It's not game over yet. So I rather kill those two than. Try to kill Narsus. As long as I don't press the A3 here and put a shield on, on myself. Oh, we haven't got the fear. Can we proc it? Come on. Uh, yeah, Roto still survived it though because we're getting kind of. Ah, thank you. I got super unlucky there with the Maritzka A1. But he just did the AoE nuke, we got our champions back, and I think both of them are gonna go before Narsus, so I think we're good. And both of them have buffs, you know, even, even though this is not super consistent to get them. Get the defense buff from Mode to Vive, but she does give you basically whatever buff you need. If you have more attack than defense, you're gonna get attack buff, and if not, then it's gonna be the other way around. So basically, attack scaling nukers get attack buff and everybody else gets defense buff. And that's very good. That's certainly um, useful, even though it's kind of uh, hard to actually... Ah, uh, I didn't think that the 
Marriage would die to the A1. <laughs> it was so squishy one. I was hoping that the A1 wouldn't kill it and I could kill it the next turn with the A3. Damn. I thought we I thought it was already game over, but now it's not over. Oh, Rooster survived it. <laughs> He's surprisingly tanky. But but we have defense buff. They, they do have strengthen and shield. It's gonna mitigate the damage a little bit. But can we get a semi-hard nuke now with decreased defense and uh, de defense buff? Yeah, yeah, that that was kind of good. And now we need to think really hardly. I think the Angora just used the Revi, so she actually can't do it anymore. I think we kill the Meritska with the A3 and then kill the Narsus and also reduce it, reduce its damage. My Rotos is not gonna die to. Narsus AoE nukes anymore. He already survived one, but he had not stealen, stolen any health from Narsus. But now we also did that, so we definitely can take one nuke. Not not maybe like many, but we can take one. Who do we want to kill? Okay, Rotos is kind of getting into the guard territory at this point. He has stolen so much health that his damage is insane. Nobody can survive any attacks. I mean, <laughs> the Maritska got one-shotted by Rotos A1 earlier. Oh, fuck. Wait, wait. No, no. I don't think he has the A3. If we don't bro proc the extra turn, we might be in trouble. Oh, we did. But I don't think he even had the A3, to be honest. We need to kill the... Narsus now, because if we kill Maritska and everybody gets revived, we can target the Narsus, so that would be a mistake. But we could actually even play it smart here and do the A2. Yeah. That's where we can get, get it back faster. And we can save it, save the A3 for Maritska. But I, th I think we're block, block reviving with the A3 anyway, so... Maybe I was overthinking about it. I forgot that we already block revived the Angora earlier. In either case, Datsus is not gonna revive it with 10 meter, so we can't lose. Wait, I'm conf confused. The Duchess got Frostbite... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what happened. The Duchess got Frostbite and procced Polymorph on my UDK, but my UDK resisted it. Yeah, that, that was kind of confusing set of events, but that's what happened. Oh, that, that was the last battle. We kind of had a mixed session, but honestly, I have more... Um, what's the word? I have more faith in... Galleus after after this video than before doing this and especially before um building him and thinking about it <laughs> god damn the 200k power does look sexy but he was kind of good honestly i think he was kind of useful my account is definitely better off with Galleus than without it obviously you know if we pulled um Galatir and Nice instead of Galleus and Aphidius, I would be destroying Live Arena and we would be competing for, you know, top 20 classic arena next week, but <laughs> I can't really hope for that kind of, um, you know, crazy um, Disney story luck. So we'll take what we can and we got these cards and they are not that bad. He, he could have been way worse. So, if you got Galleus, you know, don't feel too bad about it. Maybe he can be actually useful. Anyway, that's it. I hope, I ho I hope some other people who pulled him, maybe are a little bit depressed after watching this video. But that's it. See ya.